Good afternoon. If you're uh, joining us, we're just going to hang out another minute or two to let folks come on into the webinar and then we'll get things started. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We are really excited that we have so many folks, uh, hopefully that are on, that are interested in the Clean School Bus Program that we have here at the Environmental Protection Agency. My name is Taylor Gillespie. I'm our Public Affairs Director, uh, and I'm going to be helping facilitate our question and answer session later on. But before we get into that, um, we're going to have some opening remarks from a couple of different folks, and then the Clean School, Pro school, school Bus Program is going to also provide some details about the program, and then we'll, we'll use the rest of the time for questions and answers. So with that, I'll turn it over to our regional administrator, Casey Becker. Casey? Thanks, Taylor. Hi, everyone. I'm Casey Becker. I'm the regional administrator for EPA Region 8, which is um, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota. But today, we're really just focused on Colorado. Um, and I love talking about um, uh, Colorado schools, it's something I worked a lot on when I was in the legislature, um, is, is getting more money to schools. And I love talking about this program, the Clean School Bus Program, because it's something that does that. So um, a little background is that 25 million American school children ride a school bus to and from school every day. And that equates to 4 billion miles each year that school buses are driving in the United States. So this program really aims to decrease the number of dangerous pollutants produced by diesel buses by replacing them with zero emission and clean school buses. So the bipartisan infrastructure law uh, provides $5 billion over five years for the replacement of existing school buses with low and zero emission buses. So we're here today to talk about the second round of funding under the bipartisan infrastructure law, the 2023 Clean School Bus Competitive Grant Program. And again, this grant program will replace um, dirty diesel school buses with clean school buses. It's approximately $400 million available nationwide for this program. And for our region, which I mentioned is six states, it's $27 million. Um, so this program is important because children are particularly vulnerable to air pollution um, inside and near old uh, diesel school buses. And that's because children's heights are often um, makes them closer to the ground, closer to exhaust pipes, meaning that they breathe in more air pollution and they have faster breathing rates than adults and children's lungs are not fully developed. So we're not only looking um, to protect our nation's schools, but also children. Um, and so I, I love this program because it really does multiple things. But there's someone else on the line who was also a great champion in the Colorado legislature for Colorado schools. Um, she's now in Congress and she's gonna help kick us off with this webinar to talk about uh, the clean school bus program for EPA. And that's Congresswoman Brittany Pedersen. Thank you so much, Casey. And uh, I, I wanna call you uh, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Casey and I worked at the uh, in the legislature together, so it's so wonderful to be able to part to partner with you um, in these in these different ways. Now, um, it's wonderful to be with you all to talk about this incredible uh, program and opportunity to draw down federal funds from the uh, bill that was passed before I got here to Congress. But um, they are now releasing their second tranche of dollars. Uh, and so far, the seventh congressional district has not participated. I know we have lots of other states uh, joining here as well in the, the eighth district uh, that for the region eight. But um, I hope that places across Colorado will be participating and, and grateful for the opportunity to talk about this uh, program and ways um, to start uh, applying for these dollars. Uh, for all of you who don't know me, I grew up in Colorado. It is 
I have lived uh, nearly my entire life in the district that I represent now. I was in the legislature for 10 years and fighting to protect our environment, fighting to make sure that our kids have uh, clean air and clean water is a top priority for me. And I wanna thank the EPA for everything um, that you do to make sure that our communities are, are safe and that our, our kids have a bright future. Um, something that a, a small piece of that, but an important piece is the ability for to apply for the clean bus, um, the clean school bus program. And what that's going to do is help bring our uh, change out these old diesel uh, buses that unfortunately have increased um, the likelihood of asthma for kids, uh, kids that are uh, significantly more vulnerable as, um, as uh, Casey already mentioned earlier. Um, so this is a, a small piece in the overall uh, goals of reducing our, uh, our carbon emissions, making sure that our kids uh, are, are healthy and well and live in, in safe environments. So uh, happy to um, stay on to, to discuss more, but just want to um, thank you, Casey, for bringing people together to highlight the um, important uh, uh, the important programs that you all are rolling out and the ways that you're helping uh, make our communities better. Thank you so much, Rep. Pedersen, for joining us. And obviously, you have a preschooler, I believe, so uh, we'll have a kiddo who's going to eventually benefit from all of this. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to our public affairs director, who's going to take it from here. Thanks, Casey. Um, so from, from here, we've got, I, maybe it's like 15 minutes or so of a presentation from our clean school bus team. And then our goal is to spend a good chunk of time answering questions from you all. So you are welcome though, as this presentation is going on to go ahead and type questions into the Q and A module that should be available for you. You'll also have a chance to raise your hand later um, and ask questions at that point too. But if you've got a question as they're going through three things, feel free to go ahead and type that in. And so with that, I'll turn it over to our clean school bus program. Great. So first we want to introduce ourselves um, and then we, we might turn the camera off so it's better quality. But my name is Courtney Johnson and I am part of the Region 8 Clean School Bus team and these are my cohorts. I am Brenda Raines. I'm also part of the Clean School Bus team. Hi, I'm Marissa McPhillamy and I'm also part of the Region 8 EPA Clean School Bus team. Thanks for joining us today. All right, they should be getting a presentation up for you guys. We just wanna make sure you guys are all still there on audio, right? Can you still hear us? Yeah, we can, all right. All right. Thank you for giving us this time to present this uh, presentation to you. Um, I wanted to give everybody a reminder that this is a not the DRS school bus rebate program. This is a brand new EPA program that was created under the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, the link shown here will take you, to, take you to the Clean School Bus Program website where you can get additional information, find answers to commonly asked questions and instructions on how to apply for future grants and rebates. Below the link are the email addresses for the Region 8 Clean School Bus team. That would be Marissa McPhillamy, Courtney Johnson, who were just introduced, uh, Yechan Lim, Volpe Vol, and myself, Brenda Raines. Um, the agenda. Okay, this is our agenda that we'll be covering today. I do so want to your, highlight- your slides are not advancing. Uh-oh. So if you're supposed to be, it looks like you just went to slide two and now you're on slide three, but I, at least I just still see the first slide. You don't see the agenda? Okay, nope. let me slide control. But maybe go have someone walk through as you're still working on the slides. Okay, I'm going. Okay. There you go, that works. It does look like you might be on the, the um, like you need to switch the views. So the display settings, cause we're seeing the back end. Okay. Um, sorry about this, everybody. No, but go Should ahead with the presentation while someone's yeah. working on the back end. Um, okay, so this is the agenda that we'll be covering today. 
I do want to highlight that we, we will be giving an overview of the differences between the 2022 rebate program versus this new grant program. Um, I want to talk about an overview of the bipartisan infrastructure law. The Clean School Bus Program was created under the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, which provides the EPA with $5 billion over five years, and that's for fiscal years 2022 through 2026, as Casey stated earlier in the presentation. The first funding opportunity was the 2022 Clean School Bus Rebates and this new grant program, the 2023 Clean School Bus Grant Competition is our second funding opportunity. And then I want to talk about uh, program goals. Here's an overview of our program goals. We want to be able to engage stakeholders in program development, evolve the programs based on successes and lessons learned, promote cost parity between bus technologies, allow school districts to apply for multiple funding opportunities, maximize the number of zero emissions, and clean school buses that get funded and ensure a broad geographic distribution of awards. And I wanna highlight that we wanna allow school districts to choose from multiple funding opportunities so that they can apply for whichever funding opportunity best suits their needs. Now we're gonna go over the clean school bus rebate program. Okay, now um, you guys can see the slides, I believe. Yep, the slides look great now. We're, I think great. we're there. We're, we're into the meat of this. So again, thanks everyone for, uh, for hanging out with us through that. The slides will be shared as well. So if you miss anything, you will have the opportunity to view them at that point. So on the left side of the slide, the map reflects the, select, the selectees from the Clean School Bus Rebate Program. The most up-to-date numbers can be found on the awarded Clean School Bus program rebates webpage that's just below the map. To the right, you will see a table representing our region eight states, the total number of buses and the total award amounts per state. Okay. I wanna highlight that the prioritization criteria has expanded to include a broader range of rural school districts. School districts defined as large districts with more than 35,000 students or 45 public schools within the district may now self-certify. Region 8 has been allocated over $27 million for the new 2023 grant program. Under the grant program, bus and infrastructure funding is now combined, giving grantees greater flexibility depending on their specific needs. Okay, and we want to talk about the rebate program versus the grant program. Okay, I want to highlight some main points regarding rebates versus grants. Rebates are quick and simple with a shorter pro project period and less support and flexibility with funding. Grants are more detailed with longer project periods, more support during the project period and increased flexibility and funding. One example of grants having greater funding flexibility is that grants can cover project implementation costs now. Okay. And I want to note that we recommend reading the entire NOFO, the Notice of Funding Opportunity, to see all the program details and different steps in the application process. Okay, now I want to give a, an overview of the grant program. So this Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO, includes two different sub-programs. We have one for school districts and tribal applicants, that's called the school district sub-program, and another for third-party applicants, called the third-party sub-program. Just as in the rebate program, eligible activities include the replacement of existing internal combustion engines with either electric propane or compressed natural gas school buses, as well as purchase of infrastructure for electric school buses. Via the clean school bus prioritization criteria, EPA is committed to ensuring the program delivers on the Justice 40 initiative to ensure that at least 40% of the benefits 
of certain federal investments flow to disadvantaged communities. Now we're going to talk about eligibility requirements. Okay, so who can apply under the grant program? Under the under the school district subprogram, state and local government entities are eligible to apply as long as they are responsible for providing bus service to one or more public school systems or the purchase lease license or a contract for service of school buses. Our charter school districts can also apply now. Indian tribes, tribal organizations, or tribally controlled schools responsible for either providing bus service to one or more bureau funded schools are eligible. And under our other sub program, the third party sub program, nonprofit school transportation associations can apply as well as eligible contractors. So the grant program structure. There are a couple of key differences between the two sub programs. Under the school district sub program, applicants can apply for anywhere between 15 to 50 buses. So this program is targeting large single fleet turnovers that may have been limited by the 25 bus maximum in the rebate program. Under the third party program, applicants can apply for anywhere between 25 to 100 school buses with the caveat that each application must include at least four district beneficiaries. So this sub program is targeting school districts, particularly small rural, tribal or low income beneficiaries that may benefit from third party technical support, grant administration and coordination. And I'm going to introduce Courtney Johnson, who you met earlier to present the next group of slides, beginning with prioritization criteria. Hi everybody, I will be presenting on prioritization criteria today. So looking at the prioritization criteria for the FY23 grant program, it differs from the F, um, fiscal year 2022 rebate program and the way that the grant program is looking at small area income and poverty estimates. As you can see on this slide, high need school districts and low income areas listed as 20% or more students living in poverty. It also differs by looking at the rural section. It says that rural school districts identified with a locale code of 43 rural remotes. It also allows for Bureau, for, excuse me, Bureau of Indian Affairs funded school districts and school districts that receive basic support payments for children who reside on Indian land. So this diagram above shows the amount of funding set aside for bus fuel type and size for prioritized and non-prioritized school districts. The main difference is that in this grant program, you have the flexibility to determine the split between funding for the bus itself and the supporting infrastructure. But I wanna highlight that for charging infrastructure is the only eligible um, a piece of infrastructure, emphasizing that it's, um, you don't provide infrastructure funding for propane or compressed natural gas or CNG. All right, eligible. So for eligible existing school buses, they must be battery electric. Um, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Must be um, scrapped 2020 10 or older non-diesel internal combustion engine buses, or you may scrap, sell, or donate 2011 or newer internal combustion um, engine buses. The vehicle model must be 2010 or older and it must have a gross vehicle weight rating or GVWR of more than 10,000 pounds. The replacement bus, buses must be battery electric, compressed natural gas or propane. Um, they must be an EPA or California Air Resource Board or CARB certified vehicle model year of 2021 or newer. They must be purchased. They are not allowed to be leased or leased to own um, and they may not be purchased or otherwise subsidized with other federal grant funds. So focusing on eligible infrastructure equipment, I want to emphasize that when it comes to infrastructure equipment, it must be between the electrical meter and the charging port. I highly recommend um, contacting your local utility provider to figure out what equipment is considered eligible versus ineligible. I also wanna highlight that Build America, Buy America requirements apply to eligible vehicle charging infrastructure equipment, which I will be covering on this slide. 
For clear um, demonstration, there is this image for what you can see as eligible expenses and non-eligible expenses. And once again, I highly recommend working with your local utility provider. And these slides um, will be posted, like I said earlier, so you may refer back to them later on. Last but not least, we have Build America, Buy America requirements. So we also refer, this, refer to this as BABA. I want to emphasize that um, it funds certain infrastructure projects, such, such as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law or Bill, which is what the Clean School Bus Program falls under. It requires that all iron, steel, manufactured products, and construction materials used in federal infrastructure projects are pr produced by the U.S. And I also want to note that school buses are not subject to Build America by America requirements, but electrical charges are. Chargers are, excuse me. All right, I will now pass this over to Marissa, who will cover 2023 Clean School Bus Grant Program application evaluation process. Great, thanks, Courtney. So let's talk about how applications are going to be evaluated. So there's three steps in the process. And the first step is checking to ensure that applications meet the threshold criteria before they can move on to a full application review. So if your ap application does not pass the threshold criteria stated in the notice of funding opportunity, it will not be further reviewed. So to the right in the blue box, you can see that some of the threshold criteria are listed here. Um, and also please refer to the notice of funding opportunity to make sure you have checked the box um, and you do meet all of these threshold criteria. Step two, these are the evaluation criteria that you will find in the notice of funding opportunity. And each of these evaluation criteria has points associated uh, with them. There are 120 points total uh, for these criteria and applicants should explicitly address these criteria as part of their application package in their project narrative. So again, going to that NOFO, you will find a format in which we need you to follow as you address these specific evaluation criteria. So make sure you review that closely as you're writing your narrative. So two of the criteria we wanted to bring to your attention um, are the leveraged additional external funds and also talk a little bit about workforce development. So in order to encourage federal funding to support replacement of as many buses as possible, one of the criteria uh, that points can be scored on is looking at these additional external funds. So a few examples here would be private, public-private partnerships, grants from other entities, and the issuance of school bonds. Um, unlike the clean school bus funds that EPA is offering, these external funds are, don't have the same restrictions um, that our funding does. So for example, you could use these external funds to pay for something such as the utility side charging, infrastructure, and installation that our funds cannot be used for. Be aware that funding amounts provided by EPA may change in the future, so we're encouraging applicants to identify and, and start thinking about using these uh, leveraged external funds. So as far as workforce development, EPA is looking or is taking steps in the Clean School Bus Program to support high quality jobs and a strong labor practice. Uh, one, of this, one of the criteria is this workforce development piece. And we're looking at um, an how an application demonstrates a plan to prepare their workforce for these buses and the new infrastructure. And that could be something such as planning to ensure that current drivers, mechanics, and electricians receive training to safely operate and maintain the new buses and infrastructure. And this could also mean clarifying protections to ensure existing workers are not displaced because of new technologies. And the final step um, in the evaluation process is going to be the selection and notification. So EPA does anticipate the timing for the notification of selection to take place in the November 2023 through January 2024. Uh, just a few things to note that the school district and the third party application, so those are the two tracks of funding, uh, those will be reviewed by separate panels. In making final decisions, EPA uh, 
select, selection official may also consider a few other factors uh, besides the stated criteria, such as geographic distribution, diversity of funds, number and size of awards, environmental benefits, applicability of different business models, and other agency priorities. And then selectees will be notified by phone, email, or postal mail by US EPA. So let's talk about the, let's discuss how to apply if you're ready to do so. So first, we recommend that you visit the Clean School Bus website for tools and resources. You'll need to register your organization with grants.gov and sam.gov, prepare your application package, and submit that application package on grants.gov no later than August 22nd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So when you go to the Clean School Bus website, you're gonna find lots of tools and resources. So that's a great place to start. And some of these tools and resources include a question and answer document. Uh, EPA maintains that Q&A document, and I would recommend that you refer to that on a regular basis. Um, it's a very helpful document. Um, you could find an answer to a question on that Q&A document, uh, very similar to a question you may have. So um, I would rec highly recommend uh, taking a look at that on a regular basis. The Clean School Bus NOFO, which is the Notice of Funding Opportunity, includes information on how to prepare and submit your application. And then also taking a look at Appendix B in the NOFO, that's going to give you an application submission checklist. Again, I would highly recommend using that as you're putting your paperwork together to make sure that all the required materials are included. And we'll share that checklist with you here in a few minutes. So some other tools uh, and resources on the website, Clean School Bus website, you'll find is some technical assistance. So again, as we talked about earlier, um, if you have any interest in applying for this program, we cannot stress enough that you have an early conversation with your utility. On the website, you'll find charging and fueling infrastructure resources, and you'll also find an overview of the initial steps that you must complete in order to apply for an EPA grant, and this includes uh, registration in SAM.gov and grants.gov, which we'll talk about next. So be aware that all EPA grant applications are submitted online, and applicants have to be registered in two government systems in order to apply for our grants. The first system is called SAM.gov, and that's the system for award management that registers an organization to do business with the government. Grants.gov is the second system where you must be registered, and that's the official system for managing all federal grant applications. Again, start early. Uh, we can't stress this enough. Uh, completing your registration usually takes a minimum of 10 business days, and it can take longer if there's inconsistencies or errors with any of the information that's been submitted. So let's talk about SAM.gov first. So SAM.gov, again, is the system for award management. Um, any applicant must register with SAM.gov to obtain what is called a unique entity identifier. This is a 12 character identifier that's assigned to each organization. There is no fee for registering for SAM.gov and your registration must be renewed annually. Organizations, will need to designate an e-business point of contact. And after that information is submitted, reviewed, and authenticated, that point of contact will receive a, an email letting them know that their registration is active. So as far as grant stock of, again, this is the second system that you must be registered in. Few steps here as well. So you need to create a user account and an applicant profile in grant stock of. So after you've gotten your UEI from SAM.gov, you must go and create a profile in grants.gov, two steps. You create a user account with the same email address used by the eBiz point of contact in SAM.gov, and you create the applicant profile in grants.gov using the UEI obtained from SAM.gov. Next, you will create individual grants.gov accounts, and then the final step is to learn how to use the workspace and grants.gov. 
and the, the website that's listed here below uh, will give you more detailed information on how to apply. So here's the checklist I mentioned earlier. This is in the NOFO as well. So please make sure, again, this is a great uh, resource to have as you're putting your paperwork together to make sure that you are submitting everything that we've asked you for. Um, of note, uh, using the other attachments form in grants.gov, that is where you can upload um, additional documents such as the utility partnership template, or if you're doing the self-certification of prioritization. And those forms, um, you can find additional information on those forms in the NOFA. This is just a screenshot of the homepage of grants.gov. So when you log on or when you open grants.gov, this is what you're going to see. Again, applications have to be submitted on grants.gov by August 22nd at 1159 p.m. Eastern time. Be aware that late applications will not be accepted. So we encourage you to start early to, to avoid any stress before the deadline. I just want to highlight a few important dates. Uh, the NOFO is currently open. Our headquarters office is going to be offering a handful of webinars on the grant program um, May through August. So we encourage you to sign up and attend those webinars. Uh, you can register on the Clean School Bus uh, webpage or website there. The NOFO, uh, oh, excuse me, the final date to submit questions. So this would be to that Q&A document that we talked about is gonna be on August 9th. And then the NOFO closes on August 22nd at 1159 PM. We anticipate making the notification of selection November, 2023 to January 24, and then anticipate making awards in the February to March, 2024 timeframe. So in summary, just a few things we've already touched on, but wanna bring your attention back to, again, the, Application packages must be submitted in grants.gov 82223 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Be aware that dates and topics for future webinars are on the website under the webinar section. Uh, there will be future funding opportunities. Uh, if this program does not meet your needs, we do encourage you to consider which structure, whether that be a grant or a rebate, is the best fit for your fleet. And we do anticipate opening a rebate, another rebate opportunity in the fall of 2023. So on the right, a few resources, our Clean School Bus website. There's the website for the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation. Uh, they can help you with utility and infrastructure planning. So highly recommend that you, um, you reach, reach out to them. And then there's also the Clean School Bus helpline listed here as well. So we do want you to stay in touch. Uh, so please don't miss any updates. Uh, sign up for the listserv that's listed there. Please submit any questions you have to the clean school bus at epa.gov mailbox and make sure you view the full NOFO uh, for the 2023 grant opportunity at the site listed there. So now I'm gonna turn it back to Taylor and she's gonna help us facilitate uh, some questions and answers, thanks. Thanks. Um, so just a couple of things to I want to mention before we jump into questions and answers. So first, we are recording this session and we will post it online along with the slides. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful if you want to re-listen to anything or you want to uh, see the slides in more detail. Um, also, I know there's a couple of folks that have joined that either aren't in the region, EPA Region 8 region, you're not in one of our states. Um, all of this information is still relevant. We were just, you know, our, our kind of target was to try to get out to some of those states. But if you're on from a different state, all of the same information is still applicable. Um, so just want to mention that if you're on from, from a different state. Um, but with that, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question or type your question into the Q&A module. I'm going to start off with some of the questions that people have already typed in to give folks a chance to raise their hand or type another question in. Um, so with that, I want to start off with a question um, about public and, I'm sorry, about private and non-public schools. Do they qualify for this program? All right. Um, so you said public or private or non-public or private. Um, so again, we want you to look at the NOFO. Um, we, there are prioritized districts and non-prioritized districts. Um, if you fall under the prioritized districts, you would qualify for the program. Um, 
Marissa, do you have the? I'm pulling up the. the phone. Okay. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Cool. Um, we're we're gonna pull up the NoFo so we can reference um, the page numbers for everybody so you can look at it with us. Um, yes. If you're if you're in a if your school district is in prioritized, um, you have the opportunity to earn. I think it was three. 175,000 for electric school buses. And if it was in a non-prioritized district, um, I wanna say it was closer to 325,000 for electric school buses. Great. Um, Courtney, the next question is, uh, let me, I'm just gonna read it out loud for you because it's, it's yeah, got a lot perfect. of context in here. Um, so are institutions of higher education eligible? So here's the example. The institution is predominantly an undergraduate institution, but they do have extension K through 12 programs, particularly during the summer. And those K through 12 children do use their fleet of buses. Would they be eligible to apply? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would say that is something that we would probably have to look into um, because it is it is K through 12 schools that um, um, are able to apply for this this program for the clean school bus program overall. So uh, I don't think we've had anybody apply yet that is um, ex in the same situation. So uh, that would be that would be um, uh, we need to do more research into that one. Um, and definitely get back to you on that. And again, if, um, if yes, yeah, sorry, Taylor, if there's, if there are maybe questions or information that we don't have on hand right now, um, we do have the Clean School Bus email and our personal emails that you can reach out to for us to get back to you if we can't answer it in this webinar. Thanks, Courtney. And I, and if you're the one that sent in that question, I, I sent that email address to you directly to follow up um, with, with our folks. Um, the uh, next question is, the school district is not on the priority list spreadsheet on the clean school bus page. Are they not eligible to apply if they're not listed on that priority list spreadsheet? Oh, can you still hear us? Yep, we can. Okay, sorry, we're having some video. <laughs> video issues on our end. They are eligible to apply. It's just that a prioritized district receives more funding than a non-prioritized. Great. Um, we're, we're still getting more questions about private school districts. So private school district in either a prioritized or non or non prioritized school district. Are they eligible to both apply and potentially receive funding? Let me find out. Um, let us reference the NOFO. We have one. All right. Oh, okay. Fine. Well, well, all right, while you guys are looking that one up, I will ask you the next one, um, and then we'll circle back on the private school districts question. Um, can you clarify vehicle versus charging and infrastructure installation funding? Yeah, so um, is the question more um, oriented on how much is going towards the buses versus infrastructure, or is it um, more technical and asking what buses and what infrastructure are eligible? I don't have any more context. I, uh, if this individual wanted, wants to write in some more context, that might be helpful. But uh, it just said to please clarify vehicle versus charging and infrastructure installation funding. Okay. Um, well, maybe while they're, while they're typing in. So kind of back to what I was saying before. Um, again, we'll share the slides after this. But um, looking at that table that shows um, prioritized districts and the electric, propane, and compressed natural gas and the amount that would be um, awarded and non-prioritized with the same categories. So when it comes to infrastructure, it would only be for electric buses. Um, we do not pro provide infrastructure for compressed natural gas or propane. But what makes it different than the 2022 rebate program is that the infrastructure um, amounts is flexible. So uh, I believe for the rebate program, it was close to 25,000 for infrastructure, but with this grant program, um, you get to choose how much goes towards infrastructure and how much would go towards the electric school bus. Chris, do you wanna circle back on the private schools piece? Yes, private schools are not eligible. Um, Per the, the clean school bus statute, school buses much, must serve local education agencies. Um, but I will build on that in case this comes up, uh, charter schools uh, uh, eligibility. So a public charter school with a National Center for Education Statistics, 
district, which is the NCES ID, those charter schools are eligible to apply for funding. All right. Um, so this question is about rural school districts. For rural school districts, can they only apply for a minimum of 15 buses? So there are two methods um, of applying. Um, there is through the school district directly and then through third parties. So if you go through the um, school district route, it's a minimum of 15 buses. Um, maximum, do we know? It's, it's written down. Sorry about that. Um, she's looking at the maximum. And if you're going through a third party route, it's a minimum, I believe, of 20 to 25 buses and maximum of. Yes, so for the school district direct application, your application has to include a minimum of 15 buses. So if you have less than 15 and you wanted to, you want to apply directly as the school district, you do not qualify. So if you're coming in as a direct applicant as a school district, you have to apply between 15 to 50 buses. And if you're in the third party sub program, that is a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 100. I haven't seen any other questions. Um, if you want to raise your hand, you're welcome to do that or uh, continue to type a question into the question and answer. But um, while we're looking to wrap up here, I'll just turn it back to you guys as the Clean School Bus Program if you guys want to give any closing remarks. And then um, if we get any questions before I close this out, then I'll, I'll ask those. Sure. Thanks, Taylor. Um, just wanted to say thank you um, to our regional administrator, Casey Becker, and thank you, Representative Patterson, for joining us. Thank you, Taylor, for guiding us through this and everyone that joined us today. So uh, please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, we would love to, to chat with you. Um, and um, please consider applying. Uh, I think this is a wonderful opportunity uh, for schools to replace their buses. And uh, we really hope to see an application from you. Thanks. Great. All right, while you guys were doing that, we got two questions that came in. So let me ask these and then I'll, then I'll close out. Um, one is just to clarify, are the funding levels listed in the chart on page 10, the total amount that can be requested, or is it the amount that they can request per school bus? It's per bus. Yes. Great. Um, and then it says, if you are listed on the document, are you considered high priority? Is that what that means? So there is on the clean school bus website, there there is a list, there is a link to the list of prioritized schools. So if you, if your school district is included on that list, you are considered prioritized. Um, and then some, we got one more question in, which was about high priority, prioritization and the SAFE document. Is that how you say that? S-A-I-P-E document, which was mentioned in the FAQ. Um, I don't see what that question is, but I don't know if maybe you just want to hit on what is the, uh, you know, the SAFE document and what it in the FAQs, do you know what that might be referencing? So that's referencing the prioritization criteria, and it stands for small area income and poverty estimates. So um, I'm going to assume that the question is referencing um, whether or not uh, high need school districts are listed as part of um, that SAFE um, portion or if they are able to self-certify. So um, if you are not part of the small area income and poverty estimates, you do have the possibility to complete a self-certification. Again, that information is provided on the Clean School Bus website. Um, but if you have any more questions about it that maybe aren't addressed on that website, um, feel free to maybe type in your question again or contact us and we can provide you that information. Um, so the clarification was, if you are in, if you are on the safe document, does that mean that you are prioritized? And it sounds like the answer to that is yes, right? Yes. If you have 20% or more students living in poverty, um, which is what that safe document should provide, then yes, you should be a prioritized school district. But I would Great. reference, yeah, I would reference that um, prioritization list that headquarters has on the Clean School Bus website to ensure um, that your name is listed on that on that document. 
Great. Um, and then I see one more question coming in, which is what qualifies a district as prioritized? So you want to look at the, the prioritization criteria, which is on page seven of the notice of funding opportunity. Um, that is going to be, I can, I can just read it out for you. So it would be a high need school districts and low income areas, rural school districts identified with the locale code of 43 rural remotes, Bureau of Indian Affairs funded school districts and school districts that receive basic support payments for children who reside on Indian land. And again, there is more information on the notice funding opportunity on page seven. All right, I think those are all the questions that we got. I'll just close this out here by saying we did record this webinar um, and I know we've mentioned it a couple of times, but if you joined on later, we are gonna post the recording of this webinar and the slides onto the website. Um, there's also contact information in there. So if you think of another question, you can always reach out to the, to the team here. Um, and with that, thank you all so much for joining. We appreciate all the questions and the engagement. And, and as Marissa said, we, we hope you consider applying. Thanks, have a good day. Thanks everyone.